family, grace, love, resilience. These are just a few words that you think of when you hear the word woman. Since the beginning of time, women have been caretakers, nurturers, lovers, and friends. As times have changed, so has women's role in society. Military veteran and basketball commissioner Tamika Milburn knows that a woman's work looks a lot different today. On this episode of Heart to Heart, this boss talks about founding the Atlanta Young Misses to inspire the next generation of women. She also reveals how she overcame struggle to serve in love. Hey everybody, and thank you so much for being on Heart to Heart today. I'm so glad to have the amazing Tamika Milburn on with me today. Tamika, how are you doing? I am very well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad to have you. You are such an inspiration. I mean, you served in, our mili- in, in the military, the U.S. military. Uh, what branch was that? I was in the Air Force. <laughs> wow, thank you so much for your service. Did you enjoy that process of, of, of being in the Air Force? That was something that I remember I got offered back when I was in high school to, to go into and my parents were like, no. So did you enjoy that process? I knew I wanted to join the Air Force at a very young age and I love every bit of it. I mean, it was, it was obviously it's hard in the beginning until you get adjusted, but I loved every bit of it. It did, my career didn't turn out the way I planned, but I'm thankful mm-hmm. for everything um, that the Air Force gave me and that the people who were around me gave me. I love that. And you know, I, I have so many people in my family who came out of the military and sometimes they don't, really know what to do with their lives because that may be all they really know. Yes. Um, what, was, that, was that a similar experience for you? Oh my gosh, yes. I really left, <laughs> like, I, I had to, to go away after getting out because I was lost. I mean, that was my first job, you know? Yeah. So, and you're used to not being taken care of, but you're used to just being accommodated in certain ways, you know, especially with housing, you know, you know and, and utilities and things like that. Yes. And, you, you expect, I expected to spend 20 years. I unfortunately became sick and got out on a medical discharge that I didn't plan for. So you expect yeah. it to be there forever. So I had to deal with, I felt abandoned by the military. I felt like I had given my life to them. And then they just cut me loose when, um, when I got sick. And then I had to deal with, again, being in the real world, which I was not prepared for. <laughs> Trust me, even the people in the real world not prepared. Okay? Right. So, <laughs> so right. how was that transition for you out of the military into civilian life? <laughs> you know, fortunately, I had someone around me who um, was still in the military, was actually about to retire, who kind mm-hmm. of held me down and had my back. You know, I was still fairly young. I think I was about 24 when I got out. So I was still kind of young. And I, I, again, I've never had a job. I never had to do an interview or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. I did have my GI Bill and things like that. So I could go to school and finish my education. And right. I did have people around me who just provided great advice and, and just gave the support that I needed because I did not know what I was doing. And I had two <laughs> kids and I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> like, you know, I know that's great. <laughs> well, you made it work because when you, you got out, how long before you started uh, your organiz- your basketball organization? How long was that? Because oh, I mean, I just started it's this, really huge. How, it is huge. But so I got out when I was about 24. We're looking 20 mm-hmm. years later now. So I just started um, the basketball thing about five or six years ago with the youth side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with the pro side, I started, I believe, in 2018. Wow. Well, uh, how did you, were you, when you were young, were you playing basketball? I mean, what was your passion around that? So I've never been interested in basketball in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened, and, and you know, I think God just works. It really, like, it's strange. We look at God and we're like, what are you doing? I just, I just happened to meet a former WNBA player. And I met her. And when I spoke with her, she was, I mean, she, she's a brilliant person. She's intelligent, mm-hmm. but she was working in a warehouse. And I'm like, didn't you make money in the WNBA? And, you know, knowing that there's really not that much money to be made, especially as a rookie in the WNBA. And then, you know, she made her money overseas, but she wasn't really prepared to go into the real world. And I felt connected with her in that way after, especially going through what I went through in the military. And it's like, she just wasn't ready. And I'm like, you have a business degree. You're, you're articulate. You're, you're well, you're 
intelligent as all hell like she you know um but she just wasn't ready for the real world and when i started talking to her and i moved to georgia and started working with kids i was a personal trainer and i worked with kids who wanted to play basketball and i'm like this isn't the life i want them to live as they grow up and go through this basketball world so i wanted to put programs together for those young girls Wow. Uh, primarily girl, little girls of color put programs together so that as they went through this basketball experience through high school and college, and if they made it to the pros, they understood how to make that transition from their sport to the real world. That's awesome. Uh, as a black woman, a uh, woman of color, was there something in your childhood that you look back on and say, this is one of the things I pull on for inspiration or passion for what I'm doing now? You know, I pull on my my grandmother's legacy, which may not be big to everyone, but it's big to me. I'm gonna try not to get emotional. You know, I, I for a long time I was angry about a lot of things in my childhood, but until I started studying like what women went through, specifically black women went through, and and things that we now may look at as a weakness was really a strength to get them through their time and to get their kids through those times. You know, yes. so I look at everything my grandmother and I know her mother did before her and her mother did and what my mother did and what my aunts have done and the struggle they have gone through and the strength that they had. And it's like, I feel like it's an obligation. It's my obligation to make sure that our girls who are coming up don't have to have those struggles, that they're informed, that they're taken care of and that, you know, we're guiding them and leading them in a path to make sure that this cycle, you know, not just when we talk about the cycle, we talk about the cycle of poverty. It's not just poverty, you know, it's it's yeah. insecurity being a black woman. You know, it's 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 feeling impoverished on the inside, you know. Mm. So we have to figure out a way to, to bring these girls up so that they're not still dealing with the struggles, you know. And for me, one of the things that I always think about, you know, I went to a, a when I started college, I was the, one of the only black people in the class, and that's intimidating. You know, it's intimidating and, and it's still, I still have some insecurities about that. I still have insecurities about speaking to people and speaking in public and things like that because I was used to being the little black girl from North Philly, you know, that, that you Hello. know, right. You know, so it's like, I need to make sure that our girls coming up, I have three daughters and now a granddaughter, you know, I have to make sure our girls coming up are equipped and are confident and, and are prepared to wow. handle this world that they're going to enter into. Mm, I, I appreciate the work you're doing. It's so necessary. How do you connect with these young girls um, on a real level with all the new things that they're dealing with? I feel like my nephews and nieces, I feel like just just five years ago, they've ch it's changed so much. The landscape yes. with technology and everything moving so fast. So how do you connect with them with um, a, a slight age gap there? <laughs> that is really hard. Um, I have a group of girls that I personally work with and um, it's they I've known them since they were they're in high school now. I've known them since they were in middle school. So, uh -huh. you know, we've built that connection. But that's one of the reasons that I started the pro teams is to have people who were closer in age and understood the technology and understood the social media that I can't stand, you know, <laughs> that could actually connect with these girls and mentor them and be kind of a rock for them and a guide for them yes. as they go through their um, their journeys. So it's not me connecting with them. It's the, the players that are more, you know, they're closer to their age level than I am. That's, that's really good. I'm so glad that you started doing that. You've even started doing some uh, philanthropy throughout the city, especially as, because uh, you're in Atlanta now, right? Mm -hmm. Or the Georgia area. So you, you started doing some philanthropic, uh, philanthropic work around uh, COVID and kids being at home. Tell me about the tutoring that you've been offering. So we started, we did that last year. We haven't picked it back up. We really thought the kids were gonna be back in school this year. But last year at the end of the school year, when everything started, you know, for me, I'm a mom. You know, I have my yeah. daughter, my youngest daughter is the last one in the house, she's 12. So, you know, instantly at that time I was working full time for the federal government, but instantly I became an you know, I am an employee. I became, you know, the commissioner of the league. I became a mom, a teacher, a lunch lady, a janitor, you know, all of those things in one day, you know, and it was very hard. And then I'm struggling to try to do sixth grade or fifth grade at that time math that yeah. I don't even know what that is anymore. You know, so it was like we wanted to be able to provide parents. It was, I, it was probably selfish. We were looking to provide parents a relief, <laughs> not just for the kids, but these right. Parents, this math that they're teaching nowadays is ridiculous like it's, it's, it's like a whole new form of multiplication. it really is like, so i don't know to, why it change what what needed to change i, I have I, no idea and it's so much more than it takes longer i don't know 
<laughs> it's the same answers. I don't know. It is you know, the same I, answers. <laughs> so we wanted to be able to help the parents because I'm like, there's too many of us sitting there trying to fulfill the role of teacher, mom. Like I said, lunch lady, janitor, hall monitor, you know, at the same time, yeah. you know. <laughs> so it was really for the parents. I'm not. I'm be very honest about that. <laughs> well, either way, it's helping, right? Yes. Uh, is there a story of one of the one of the young girls who had really touched you that you saw a great change in her life? Oh my gosh! So I have. I'm really excited. We actually have two girls who are coming out of college and this year and playing in our league. Uh, um, one of the girls. Um, I'm a to just briefly. One of them is Taylor Jones, who is the daughter of Jermaine Jones, who played in the NBA for several years. He's a retired NBA player. She's going to Philly to study. She's going to become a dentist and she's going to Temple. Ooh. So she's going to play. I know, right? She went through <laughs> our program and she's going to be playing with the Philly team. And then we have Tierra Hodges who started with us. And this girl is just phenomenal. She started with us when she was in 10th grade. She's graduating from Furman in South Carolina mm. this year. Um, Tierra, when she came to us, <laughs> she had never really played real basketball. She played on our high school team, but anybody who knows anything, you don't get recruited really unless you're playing AAU. But when she started, she, you know, she was a, a big girl. So she kind of played, she was a big girl for high school. So she played in the post. She couldn't dribble. I mean, you know, she couldn't shoot. You know, every she just knew how to stand there, take a charge, rebound. She could rebound now. You know, she, rebound. And, <laughs> yeah, she could rebound. But we knew that she wouldn't be recruited for a post player in college because she wasn't big enough. And that baby, when I tell you that. You know, she worked. She was in the gym with us three, four times a week. We were so hard on her. You know, I, I would took back. I went back to the military and I trained our girls like the military. <laughs> like, but we did it because it doesn't just train them physically. It trains them emotionally and mentally. And we yes. know if you can push through what we're doing. College is going to be a lot easier for you. You know, we mm -hmm. had GPA requirements that they had to meet. You know, there's things that we made sure that they were going to be equipped to handle college, especially a school like Furman, you know, which they're, they're a high academic school anyway, <laughs> you know, so she went through the program with us, even when she signed and before she graduated, she kept working out. She kept coming to us. Mm -hmm. There were times that her parents were like, you're being too hard. We're going to pull her out. But they stayed with us. You know, they stayed with us. And now like she's a superstar at Furman. Wow. You know, like she, she's graduating. She's uh, averaging double doubles like her. She is a superstar at Furman. I don't know what they're going to do to replace her, but, but she's a superstar. Now watch her. She didn't have the confidence that she needed to watch her yeah. actually get in front of a crowd and speak, you know, and, and it's just it's an amazing journey that she's taken and that she's going through with herself and with basketball and to just watch it and be a part of it. Like I'm blessed. I'm honored to see that what we do actually works from the beginning, the high school phase all the way to the end, to the pro side and then even mm -hmm. further than that. She's also studying, she's studying so occupational therapy, so she'll be good too when wow. she's done basketball. That's so <laughs> awesome. I know that's so fulfilling to see your work actually have tangible results yes. um, in someone's life. I, I know there are so many things happening right now with uh, the election of Joe Biden and him having such a diverse uh, cabinet. And of course, our first woman of color who is a uh, Vice President, how has all of that impacted and affected you as a Black woman? How do you feel about everything that's happening in our world right now? You know, it's funny because during, the, you know, we watched the um, the inauguration and I made my 12 year old come watch it and she was so mad. She wanted to run around I'm like, no, you're going to watch this. You don't understand what's happening right now, but you'll understand right. it later. For me, it's like, you know, we didn't see that growing up. You know, mm -hmm. we had the Cosby show, you know, and for someone like, that was really what we had. And for someone yes. like me, the Cosby show wasn't attainable. It wasn't realistic. I was never going to be, you know, Claire Huxtable. It just wasn't attainable for me in my mind at that time. Yes. So now we have, there are women with stories that we can relate to. You know, there are women who didn't start from, who started from where we started from that yes. we can actually relate to, you know, and even though our kids are really entitled and spoiled, you, you know, it, they, they're going to understand that struggle as they get older. So for me, wow. it's like, it's happening, but I have to make sure that our kids are actually seeing it happening and understanding. You know, I'm all about history and I'm all about who came before us. If you don't understand where we've been, you will never appreciate where we are right now. You know, I think that's a lot of the problem with these kids nowadays. They don't know where we've come from. You know, and when I say me, I mean my grandma, you know, and her grandma and my mom. But they, I you did. know, so watching, you know, the inauguration and watching uh, Biden pick all of these women of color and, and you know, different backgrounds. It, it's it's awesome to see, but it's more awesome that we make sure our kids understand it and they see it, too. I love that. Uh, and there's I mean, there's so many great inspirations right now. What what What's someone who has inspired you who's still alive? <laughs> and someone who has uh, gone on? 
I'm always going to say my mom <laughs> and my grandma. I'm like, I don't care who comes along. It's going to be my mom and my grandma. My, my grandma passed right. away several years ago, you know, uh -huh. but, and, and I guess I say that, you know, we watch people on TV, but we don't, you know, they do stories on them, but we have not shared their journey. We've not walked yes. with them as they've gone. I've walked with my mother. I've watched what she's going through. I watched mm -hmm. her walk to school, walk to work to, to make sure that she could buy a house in an area. She moved us to New Jersey when we were in high school in an area that we were going to get a better education. You know, I watched her work two jobs and go to school. I used to sit at her job and do homework, you know, because when I was a very little girl. So she's always going to be my inspiration because I watched how hard she worked to make Ooh. things better for her daughters. You know, and she was a single parent you know she didn't have help it was just her and she was myself and my sister uh who lived with her and it was just i watched her journey and i was there i felt it you know i don't feel it with celebrities and people on tv but i felt her journey you know yeah what, what was the biggest lesson that you learned from your grandmother <laughs> i learned and it's crazy because i learned it when she was um at the point where she was about to pass away um mm. to not be apologetic for who you are you know, and that's something that I, I'm still learning because we have a lot of I have. I know I personally I admit mine. I'm not going to say what anyone else has. I have a lot of flaws, you know, um, and I can't apologize for some of them. Some of them are, you know, were in me when I was a child that I'm still trying to get through. But I have a lot of flaws and I can't apologize for that. And I also can't apologize for the things that are I'm passionate about. You know, like I don't apologize for not being a fan of basketball, you know, because <laughs> I just don't. No. <laughs> you know, so, You're doing the work though, so that's all that matters, right? <laughs> so I just, I'm, I, I cannot, I can apologize for at my actions, but I can't apologize for who I am. Hmm. Well, that's <laughs> she taught you right on that one. That, <laughs> that is so big. I think a lot of times we try to live up to someone else's approval and opinions yeah. and then we end up doing more damage to ourselves than was already there yeah so we know what we got to fix in us a lot of times <laughs> right <laughs> right that is a lesson i've actually learned over the past year that you know i'm trying to do this thing with this league COVID hit we've had so many obstacles and i'm trying to live up and do what I think other people need me to do. And I have not taken care of myself in my home and it really screwed me up like in a really bad way. So mm -hmm. I, that's something that I've had to learn. I'm kind of thankful for that lesson because it happened before we could really, really, really get started. Um, so as we get started, I've been able to, you know, make some changes and, and take care of some things. But I did learn that lesson. You know, God has a way of teaching us things that we don't really want to go through. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that because a lot of people don't appreciate the lessons and the things they go through. Uh, they just get uh, really upset and frustrated at the outcome instead of really seeing the benefit of walking through it. Right. Um, but I, I, I am very hopeful for what is to come for you and all that you have going on. Let's try things. Let's try things. What's up, y'all? My name is Bree, and I'm a singer and entertainer, and I am honored to be entertainment for you while you're at home in quarantine, yeah? <laughs> hey! This is a song that I wrote about being in love. It's called Roswell. It's off my new EP, Hard to Love. Make sure you check it out. Hope you like it. Took me high up on a mountain under foreign stars. And I was laying on your chest on a waterfall. I never will forget how I got so gone. But I was lost. Oh, 
that you have fun. I had a blast. I hope you all are staying safe and that you're happy and that most importantly, you're loving on yourself. Peace. I love, I love, I love to do this segment where it's like a lightning round of questions. Oh, goodness gracious. I get to get to know you <laughs> a little bit better. Uh, it's really easy. It's, all you have to do is give a word or a phrase to answer. Okay. <laughs> Really easy. We'll do a test. We'll do a test right now. We'll, and I know the answer, but I'll, I'll ask it anyway. Um, I am from Philly, North Philly. <laughs> All right, there you go. Oh, by the way, my mom is also from North Philly. So that is yes. so cool. Yeah. <laughs> the first few years of my life in Philly before me and my uh, parents and grandparents moved down to Charlotte, North Carolina. So okay. glad, to, uh, glad to be another Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, so let's try this one. Um, I feel the presence of God when? When I make mistakes. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I think that's one of the <laughs> best answers I've heard on that one. Food heaven is when I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I don't really eat a lot. Um, let me see. I would say peanut butter. <laughs> Peter butter? Yeah, I like is peanut butter. Out the can? Is it straight out the can or the bottle? Right out the jar. Crunchy. Extra crunchy peanut butter. Me too. I like some extra crunchy. Don't play with me. I, all day. All day. And it's so sad because my partner does not like peanut butter at all. But uh, <laughs> so when it's on my breath, it's like, get away from right? me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I experience love when? When I go through struggle, <laughs> I'm gonna mm. say that's when you see the love of people when you're struggling. Oh, yes, yeah, that is so that's good. when you see God's work, that's when you see people who genuinely care about you. Wow, 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 mm, that's good. The purpose of forgiveness, healing, mm. it's to heal. I am living in my purpose when. I'm doing what I know I'm supposed to do, not with uh, what other people want me to do. Mm, come on now. That's good <laughs> right there. The artist I can sit and listen to on a rainy day. Lauren Hill. <laughs> you know what? That I literally had that conversation. I said the same thing. Lauren Hill all day. All day. Um, there was an interview I did with Lecrae, and he was talking about um, her song, one heart or one it's a newer song of hers i gotta look it back up but it's it's one something uh and he was talking about how real and vulnerable she was but that her music i mean i can just hit play and just yes. go all in on that one yeah oh yes lauren hill all day uh, <laughs> i feel most fulfilled when i see the end results of what we're doing <laughs> and i'm glad you have those results too yeah the biggest obstacle to my peace is me. <laughs> <laughs> All day, right? All day. <laughs> I replenish my spirit by oh, burning sage and listening to Tasha Ka <laughs> and praying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tasha, break every chain. Yes, sage, Tasha Ka, and prayer. <laughs> break every chain. Yes, everything. Yes, everything. Yes. What's the most difficult decision you've ever had to make to fulfill purpose in your life? Um, I would say this year, the direction of the, this league and, and um, how we're going to move on and 
how we're going to manage a lot, how I'm going to manage me personally have to manage a lot of the unexpected and the unknowns. Mm. Well, yeah. praying your strength on that one. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the word that you would describe that would describe why you're here? My grandmother. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a good answer. I said, you got some good answers on these. I like that. <laughs> if I could, if you could erase one habit, one challenge or one disease in the world, what would it be? Mm, that is a good one. Greed. That's it big. Greed, that's called that's like everybody's problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm actually reading a book by Bell Hooks um, all about love right now. And um, she talks about that. And one of the chapters is actually entitled Greed. And she talks about how you really can't have a equal and just society ever when there's greed and consumption. I mean, as long as somebody wants more than the next person um, and is willing to yep. do whatever it takes to get it, um, you never can have a just society. So yeah, I, I, I'm glad you said that. It's literally, I just read that yesterday, that chapter. So um, you're right on time. <laughs> um, now, this is a good one. The reason I need to trust is... Mm. That's something I have a problem with. <laughs> because I'm not going to get anywhere in life without trusting other people. <laughs> or at least taking that chance of trusting other people. That's why. Right. Right. <laughs> One thing I struggle with. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, last thing, if you could go back in time, I know you help help younger women. So um, if you could go back in time and whisper in your younger self's ear, what would you say to yourself? To just not be afraid. Mm. Mm. Just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Like <laughs> wow. Thank you for all the work you're doing to inspire the young women of Atlanta and surrounding areas and all that you're doing really to just be an inspiration to other people who want to see uh, our next generations come up with more faith and courage and strength. Uh, you really are a great example of being a light and and putting your hands to something instead of just speaking about it, you know? <laughs> and so thank you for that. Uh, I want you to tell everybody where they can find you and how they can help. Um, we are at, so on uh, our website is the, the WPBA.com and on social media at the WPBA everywhere. <laughs> so. Awesome. Is there anything we can do to support you and what you're doing with the uh, with the girls? We're always looking for volunteers. We actually usually have a leadership conference, so we'll be reaching out and looking for women volunteers to do to help with our to speak at our leadership conference to kind of help. We did vision boards the last time we did it um, to help kind of you know uh, work with the kids. It's only a short time, you know. We have them for a couple of hours, and I'm yeah. not sure if we're doing it virtually or in person. Probably virtually, but just to to for people who are who want to inspire kids, talk about their journey, and they don't have to be athletes. You know, I like when. Um, you know, last time we had attorneys, we had doctors, you know, everyone from all walks of life. Uh, we had athletes, but anyone who has their story and their journey, because you never know who you're going to touch with it. So we're always looking for people to volunteer and just, you know, so we can get them in front of our girls. Awesome. Well, we we over here at Heart to Heart have a good array of amazing women that have been on here, including yourself. So I'm sure we can uh, pull on our resources and help out with that any way that's <laughs> needed. You. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank yeah. you again. It's been such a pleasure to speak with you today, Tamika, and uh, just keep shining and stay strong. All right. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely.